Good afternoon, uh, everyone. This is Brother Smith uh, from First Gospel Church, Little Rock, Arkansas. God greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. Uh, I just mentioned to you today that I realize that we're going through something never in our lifetime that we've ever went through as far as this uh, uh, social spacing that, that our government has us under. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm wanting to be in church service, <laughs> but uh, I feel like it is a safe thing for right now. Um, my hope and my feelings are that this will soon pass and we'll get back to uh, life as we know it in the normal. But I want to remind you, as the people of God, I don't feel you should fear. In fact, I don't think it's, it's pleasing to fear God. As I mentioned last week, I mean, to, to fear man and the things that can happen in natural life because uh, the Bible says perfect fear cast out, or perfect love cast out fear. Well, um, when you understand the perfect love of God and you know that you're his child and not even a sparrow falls to the ground, but what he's aware of it. And how much more, Jesus said, are you and I than a sparrow? So <clears throat> uh, let's trust the Lord. He's worthy to be t trusted. Uh, if you go back to uh, the plan of God, uh, back as far as Abraham, the covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He made a covenant with Abraham that, you know, remember he told him to look to the, to the uh, north and east and west and south, and as far as you can see, I'm going to give that to you and to your seed. He told him also that his seed would be as, a num as the sand of the sea and the stars in heaven. Uh, we've always taught that the sand of the sea is the new earth people and the stars of heaven is the bride of Christ. I may say more about that. I'm not exactly sure here in this session, but... I just wanted to remind you of the of the covenant God with Abraham, and uh, he also promised him redemption. And uh, that came to pass. He also, I, I said the sand of the sea uh, and the stars in heaven. He also, uh, the Gentiles was included in that. Uh, we're a people that we're not a people, not until God added us to the kingdom of heaven uh, through Jesus Christ. But now we are a holy nation of people. We are part of the Abrahamic covenant. And that covenant was extended to Isaac, his son, and also Jacob. God... Uh, carried out his promise and his, his covenant. And of course, it was carried out uh, finally through Jesus Christ, the redemptive plan of God uh, that was shown in, in Abraham uh, being told to take the life of his son, Isaac. Uh, God put him through that practice uh, uh, which was a type of God allowing his son to be crucified for the sins of man. Uh, then later when they were under Moses' uh, leadership, uh, even before that, under Jacob, if you remember when they, uh, there was a great famine in the land and God sent uh, Jacob, sent Joseph first, uh, to Egypt and Joseph became the leader over Egypt and God made a way through Joseph for Jacob and his whole family to go there 
uh, during these seven years of great famine in the land, God preserved the children of Abraham in the land of Goshen, a very fertile area of Egypt that was widely known for raising cattle, sheep, uh, and the animals uh, of the children of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And God preserved them there through that entire famine. Look, saints, we're, we're not going through anything like that right now. What our, what's required of us right now is not all that hard to accomplish. Stay at home. <laughs> now, I don't like it any more than you do, and I want to be back together with the saints of God, and I want, it to, I want for our economy to get back where it needs to be. But I just wanted to remind you how that God uh, I mentioned uh, after that of Joseph, uh, God using him to preserve the children of Abraham. And then God, uh, you know, he even foretold that they were gonna be slaves for 430 years. They were, they went to Egypt and they were in slavery there. But you have to remember, this was just a small band of people God started out with. And uh, those people, uh, they, they were in slavery, but there's where God had, he had them where he wanted them to begin to work with them and develop them as a people until they became a great number of people in so much that Pharaoh was fearful that they would wind up overtaking the land. And so if you remember, he even uh, put out a decree to, to kill all of the boy, children, babies. And of course, that's where Moses, God preserved Moses. And, uh, but God got those people ready. And when he had them where he wanted them and had them ready and humbled enough that they would listen to a man of God and to God's working, with them, he delivered them. Uh, and of course, they had to go through a wilderness wandering. Uh, God said in, I believe it's in Deuteronomy 8, where he said, I put you in this place to prove you. So listen, saints of God, God may have us in a place of proving right now. Don't go backwards, but go forward. Uh, Reach down in your inner being. That's that Holy Ghost born again man and develop a strength, uh, exercise your faith that God, he wants us both through bad times and good times to serve him in our fullest fashion or in the, in the best way that we can. Um, so, uh, right now, uh, we don't know exactly what's what's taking place, but I can tell you, God's well aware of it, and he's well aware of his children. He knows where his children are, and he's faithful. We're under the covenant. We're, as a matter of fact, we're under the covenant uh, of Jesus Christ, a better testament than the old covenant, but they all harmonize and work together. And so we are a blessed, blessed people. Uh, God has blessed us enormously, uh, especially in the United States. But those of you, you may be listening in the Dominican Republic and other nations across the world. If you're God's child, you're blessed above measure. Just like when Jesus or when the angel told Mary, you're blessed among women. That was a picture. Mary was a picture of the church, of Jesus Christ. And so uh, we are blessed people and God has his hand on us and you don't need to worry. You just need to trust in him and believe that God's hand is on your life and that he is not only going to, but he is taking care of you. And the the the... There's a song that says, "The how does it say that? The 
longer I serve him, the greater he grows. And it's true. The, like I mentioned, understanding God's perfect love. We all have to grow in a place where we understand him. We begin to think like God. We, we, our relationship develops with him. And uh, we're, a, we're a blessed people among any people in the earth. Look, the United States, the United States is a chosen nation. It's a chosen nation for the restoring of the body of Jesus Christ. Um, I hope that most everyone listening knows that the early church did fall away and went into apostasy. And that was God, God knew that had to happen. He finished his harvest among the Gentiles and he um, began to work with a new people, the Gentiles. I mean, he finished his work among the Jews, his harvest among them, making up a portion of his bride. And then he began to work with the Gentiles. But you have to remember that the Gentiles didn't have the same platform. They, they were not uh, groomed up in the things of God for 2,000 years like the Israelites were. Uh, and, the, and how God harvested that world on the end of the Jewish world on the end of that 2,000 year period. Well, we're getting near the end of a 2,000 year period uh, down here. Uh, after the early church and God's been working on the Gentile church, he finally brought reformers out in the, uh, uh, back with Martin Luther in the 1500s. And uh, God's been working on restoring the church ever since, developing the Protestant movement, then the Pentecostal movement. Finally, the body of Christ uh, has been developed in America, and that message is being carried out over many parts of the world today. And God's plan is not going to fail. Uh, the uh, let me let me read you a scripture here in Hebrews. The uh, uh, let's see, the sixth chapter of Hebrews, and we'll start in the tenth verse. It says, "For God." is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. That you should not be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises for when God made promise to Abraham because he could not he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I'll bless thee, and multiplying I'll multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured Abraham, so obtained the promise. For men verily swear by, by the greater, and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Thank God for the hope that we have today that is set before us. And as he said, um, that we would have full assurance of hope until the end. Don't, don't let your hope wane. Hope is a great thing. It, hope Faith is the things that we are hoping for. If you don't have any hope, you don't have much faith. But the greater faith you have, the more hope you will have. It'll build hope. Faith will tell you what I'm hoping for. What are you hoping for today? Well, I'm hoping 
for a blessed life in the Lord. I'm hoping in getting closer to him and knowing him in a greater way, understanding his perfect love with a full assurance until the end. That's talking about the end of the work of God that he's working on in your life and in my life. I've said lately and many times before that right now God, every child of God, the Lord has imputed righteousness. He's counted us righteous. When you get saved, you're not righteous. You're forgiven of your sins, your carnal mind, your the carnality, the Adamic nature. It works in you and it's a cursed, it's a, a the Adamic nature is a cursed nature. It's a fallen nature. But when you're born again of the Spirit of God, there's an inner man. There's a new man, Paul called it, born within you. That, that is the nature of God the Father that was given to Jesus Christ that he died for your sins and mine that we might be born of the same spirit. Think about that. You, if you're a child of God, you're born of God's spirit. You are a child of God by nature. You have the nature of God in you. Now, you also have the nature of Adam in you that has to, you have to overcome it. That's why Paul said to mortify the deeds of the flesh through the spirit. The spirit of God will help you. This inner man, its connection with God, it will help you in overcoming the Adamic nature. The closer you get to God, the more you learn of him, the more he works in your life. The, the more you'll be like him, the more you'll understand his perfect love. The more you'll walk, John the apostle said, that we should walk even as he walked. Well, you don't do that as a child of God. You have to grow into that. And that's why God, because of the work of Christ in dying for your sins, has imputed righteousness to you, just like he imputed it to Abraham by his faith and by your faith in God and you're walking in God, God's imputed righteousness. He counts you righteous in every area you're not righteous. But as you grow in God, you'll put off unrighteous, the unrighteousness of the Adamic nature and put on the righteousness of this God-like nature until finally you will be righteous like Christ is righteous and you will have put off or mortified the deeds of the flesh, the Adamic nature and become like Jesus and you will have had full assurance to the end. Now if that's not hope, if, if your hope is broke if you're, not, if you're not getting what I'm saying. But let your hope arise in you today. Let God work in your life today. Let him assure you, you're his child. Just like the children of Israel over in the land of Goshen, when the land was in trouble and famine was everywhere, the God of heaven made a way for his children. He'll make a way, the song says, for his children. I'm as certain of that today as I'm as certain that I'm sitting right here. Anyway, Jesus, God, the Bible said he could not lie. That we were to lay hold upon the hope that's set before us, verse 18. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. That hope will take you in behind the veil, the holy place, eventually the holy of holy. Um, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, 
made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Those, in, those two immutable things, by the way, where God swear by an oath and he cannot lie was one of them was when he swear by an oath to Abraham and made him a promise. The next immutable thing where God can't lie was when he made a promise to Jesus. And uh, that's in uh, Psalms 110, the fourth chapter. He promised that he would be a priest out of the order of Melchizedek and God kept that promise with Christ here on this earth. So you and I, what did that scripture say? Let me, I wanted to say it one more time. Which hope, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Praise God. So there's a hope set before you and I today, and we have not, we have not, we have not finished. This is not until the end. If if you're here um, and you're still serving God, uh, stay dedicated, stay faithful. God knows you and he knows exactly where you are. He loves you. You're his child. He loves you more than anyone else could possibly love you. Love you more than your mother, more than your father. He loves you more than your wife or your children could love you. And that's a great love. I've often said that marriage, marriage is a picture of our joining with Jesus Christ in being born again, him becoming our savior, our in type, our husband. We in type his wife. That's why the Bible calls the bride, the bride. Because in living together in a marriage, uh, it's a commitment. It's a commitment forever, just like the commitment you have to make with Jesus Christ. And when you start out, it's there's a lot to be accomplished. There's a lot to be adjusted to. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to develop. There's a lot of working out a relationship with each other. And it's that way in serving God. In serving God, you may start out thinking you know some things about God or how you know, what you think, what your idea of God is. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're all trying to put the great puzzle of God's eternal purpose together in our thinking, in our mind. That's why the Bible says eventually his name is to be written in our foreheads. That's just talking about think our thoughts, our thought pattern, who we are. Your mind is who you are. And the Lord, when he finishes with you, when you come to the end of your walk with God and God's work is finished in you, we are, Paul said, his workmanship. And when his work is finished in you, his name will be written right in your forehead. You'll think like him. You'll act like him. You will be like him. You will be righteous when he finishes his work in you. What a hope. What a hope of a life of eternal, or eternity, where there's peace and joy. No more tears. No more trials like this. We will have, we're going through our trials right now. The, the book of Revelation, I believe it's in the 12th chapter, talking about the early church saints. It says they overcame by the word of their testimony. And I've often said no one, no one can have your testimony. Your testimony is like, it's like a fingerprint. 
No one else has it. There's not two alike. You are a special individual that God has carved out for his eternal purpose. And he is, look, look at this scripture. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. That's talking about a good man or woman, mankind. Your steps. Now, I know you've got steps that God didn't, didn't tell you to take. I'm talking about God working to, di to direct your way of life. He's ordering. He's dealing with you. That's why you're not like people of the world. You can't, you can't just do what you want to do. God won't let you because he's working to develop you into righteousness. You are to be like his disciples, his apostles, when he told them, you're not of this world. And you're not of this world. If you've been born of God, you're not of this world. You're not of the majority that is living in the Adamic nature doing their own will. But we, like Jesus Christ, we have to look at ourselves and look at God and his work in our lives and say, not my will, Lord, but thine be done. I'll stand steady. You're the potter and I'm the clay. Mold me and shape me in your own way. Do what you need to do to me, but save me. You know, Isaiah said it pleased God to bruise Jesus. That don't sound right, does it? Well, what that means is it pleased God to put him through the things he went through that caused him to develop in full assurance unto the end the righteousness of God. And God, I, I hate to tell you this, but it pleases God to bruise you or to put you through things, put you through tests. Now, I know the scripture says in James that God tempteth no man, neither can he be tempted with sin. That doesn't mean God won't test you. What it means is God will never try to get you to sin. He's not never going to tempt you and try to make you sin. But you will go through temptations. Jesus in Hebrews, the second and fourth chapter tells us that he was tempted. He was tried. He was tempted in every point as we are. Paul said all that's in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You'll be tempted in those things. The lust of the eyes. You look at things through your eyes that are pleasing to the flesh. The lust of the flesh, the desires in this life that are pleasing to the Adamic nature. The pride of life, who I am. I want to be something that man can honor and man can approve of. No, you want to be you want to be what God can honor and what God will approve of. Serve him, saints. Don't lose faith. Now, I miss those of you in First, First Gospel Church. I miss being with you right now. I'm telling you, I'm, uh, I hope you're missing it too. And then I hope there's others Possibly they're listening today that, that you're considering getting back in church, giving your heart back to God, getting back in the walk of faith and hope 
and gaining that full assurance again. Look, we have a lot to do. I probably will talk again this week, a midweek talk. Um, I, I, I have some more things that I, would, I wanna say that I wanna talk about. I would like for you to know uh, what's ahead of us, where, where we uh, are today in God's timetable, in God's plan. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, you know, we, we, I want to make sure that you saints understand the sequence of where we are and what's ahead of us and what has to be done. I'm telling you, the end is certainly, it's not here. Not yet. We have many things to do. There's much prophecy that has to be fulfilled yet. God's going to do many things. He hasn't even finished making up his bride yet. There's still a thousand years to take place, but there's a lot that has to take place before that. Before. We haven't even seen the two-horned beast in Revelation 13. It's not even been developed yet. It's not been set up. The mark of the image of the beast is not even, a, it's not even here yet. That has to take place before the end of the Gentile world. There, there, we're, we, we have a great calling and we need to focus on it. And we need to realize what's taking place right now in the world with this COVID-19 virus. virus. God's well aware. In fact, I would say anything this uh, worldwide, having worldwide effect, God is in it. God's getting this world ready. And I'll explain that more this week. I have something on my mind that I'd like to talk a little bit about the the consecutive events that's going to take place from right now until the Gentile church is restored. What's going to, and, and there will be seven vials. I may talk on the seven vials of the book of Revelation to explain the judgment in the end of the Gentile world that will end in Armageddon, but we're, we're not there yet. We've got quite a bit have to be done yet. And then the thousand years, resurrections of both the just and the unjust. That, that has to take place. It has to take place in con, in, consecutively so that we have an understanding of what, not only what he's doing, but what he's going to do. But right now, God wants you, can I say, pull up your bootstraps, are your boots by both bootstraps? Lift your head up high. Serve God and know with full assurance that he's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of his church. He loves you. He loves his church. And he wants you to serve him. Here's some information about you. <laughs> that, if you heard that, I don't know. I don't even know what it is. My TV, sometimes it's got, it hears you talk. And uh, it's one of them Google things and it's talking back to me. Anyway, it might have just been God giving us an alert to, to pay attention to what he's saying to you today. <laughs> God bless your hearts. I love every one of you. All of you that are listening, um, tune in again. This week, uh, I will talk Thursday night at 7 o'clock. And I'll try to lay some of these things in sequence. I'll have them posted. And before I leave, <clears throat> if we was in church, 
I'd take up prayer requests and I'd have the ushers come up forward to receive the tithes and offering. <laughs> but the ushers aren't coming forth and I'm not going to be able to receive prayer requests unless somebody wants to put it on uh, on uh, you know, the comment section there. By the way, you can write questions, Bible questions to me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try to answer any today, but I'll keep your questions and I'll get around to it in some of these live sessions. In fact, one of the, these, th I was just thinking this morning, I thought we may, God may want us to utilize the media more than we are. And I'm working right now on being able to have a live talk, live Bible study every week. I'd like to do that for not only the church here, but the Dominican Republic and others. I've, we've got people in Puerto Rico, people in Chile, people in nations all over the world that are asking us for some way to communicate with them. Well, I can, I've, I can set this up where I can talk and, and I can have an interpreter of Spanish. By the way, I want all of the saints of the First Gospel Church to pray for Jose Cito and Denise Calderon and their little girl. They're in St. Martin, and I want to bring them here to Little Rock, to First Gospel Church, and I'd like to, if God will grant it, I want Brother Jose Cito to, to be groomed to help me as an interpreter of Spanish for the Dominican Republic. Precious family. They want to come, but they cannot leave St. Martin right now. They're banned from leaving the island. But as soon as they can leave, they want to come, and we're going to bring them to Little Rock, and uh, they're going to begin to work with us. So pray for that family, please. Then pray for... Uh, Sister Abraham and our church is just really having, uh, she's just having a lot of anxiety and worried about all of this. And she's, she's isolated herself in her home, fearful that she might get this virus. Pray for her. Then please pray for Brother Daniels. Brother Daniels' health is not good. And he certainly doesn't need the flu or anything else. Uh, just pray for his health. Sister, um, Sister Wilson, pray for her. Some of these older sisters and older saints, Brother and Sister McGowan, uh, keep praying for me, this issue I've had with vertigo. It is getting better, and I'm determined with God's help. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to win over this. I'm doing better. I'm improving, but I'm not complete yet. But keep praying for me, if you would. And I want you to know I appreciate and uh, desire your prayers. Pray for Brother Shelby uh, Weaver in the church. And his brother, Ray, and his wife, Susan. They need our prayers. Sister Alexander. Uh, well, we just all need to be praying for one another because uh, uh, right now we need each other. And we need each other's prayers. Let's remember those, those things in prayer when we finish today here. If you would, please remember our, uh, our prayer request that we have in our church. And those that you know about, uh, let's pray for each other's petitions in the Lord. And then uh, I can't have the, the ushers come forth and take up your tithes and offerings, but you can mail your tithes to our, our mail them to the church. Uh, uh, also remember, uh, before I say more about that, I want you to remember uh, our saints in the church, like uh, Sister Hannah that's working in the medical industry, Sister Amy York works at St. Vincent's, uh, Sister Holly, uh, pray for them because they are taking care of of people in, in the medical uh, field and they're, you know, they're exposed. They're getting themselves exposed to these things. And so 
Uh, and also Brother Jerry York. Brother Jerry York went in the hospital this week and they thought he might was going to have a heart attack or a stroke. Thank God it turned out it wasn't a stroke and it wasn't his heart. I'm so thankful for God for that. This man has defied. He's defied the medical industry. He was 40 years old. When they did the first bypass operation on him, they said he wouldn't live seven years. Well, that's been like 27 or eight years ago. He's, he's, going on, he's, he's upwards towards 70 years old now. He's liable to live to be 100, who knows? <laughs> anyway, uh, the post office box for the church is P.O. Box 46414, same zip code, 72204. A sister Durham posted it as a comment right now. Again, it's P.O. Box 46414. Please mail your tithes and offerings in. Our church expenses are still the same. Uh, our Our... Our our last week's offering was less than half of what it normally is. So this is affecting the finances of the church. And of course, I'm sure many of you are going to send your tithes and offerings in that may not have been included in this last mailing. So we we this is a precious church, good givers, and I trust the Lord. And I trust you that you're going to continue to help us financially. So I want to thank you in advance for your tithes and offerings in a time like this that we can't pass the plate. We just all we can do is say, mail, mail your offering. And we, we're still trying to get something up on our website where you could pay debit or credit credit card if that's what you wanted to do. But you can always mail your mail your tithes into that post office box. We no longer are using uh the mailbox at the church. I mean, uh, you can still, you could drive by there and put it in there, but it's probably safer just to mail it. Um, and of course, we've got a change of address. So if you mail it to the old address, it would still go to the P.O. box, or supposedly it will. But eventually we will keep that P.O. box address. Remember Thursday, Thursday night at seven o'clock, I will have another talk and uh, I've got some things I'd like to say about the end of the world. What's ahead after the end of the world? What's after Armageddon? What all is going to take place? What's the time frame of it? What's some of the things we should look for? I probably will talk on some of those things. But today, I used to have an old pastor. He used to end services with a little course. A song that says, God will take care of you. Through every day and in every way, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. Don't you realize that you're the apple of his eye? He longs, the message today is for you and I to serve him and realize that he's calling us to be a part of the bride of Jesus Christ. That's what he's making up right now. And we'll, in this restored church in the end of the Gentile world, and, and look, serving God, like that song says, the longer I serve him, greater he grows. It's because when you please God, he favors you. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yes, he, he wants to reward his children with blessings. You, you don't have to go through a trial if, you, if, you're, if you're doing what God wants you to do. He, he won't have to put you through so much. That's why you want to focus. That's why you want to serve him. Let me tell you something, saints. There is no other life where there's, that can even scratch the surface of happiness. Joy, Peter said, joy unspeakable. The world's fretting right now. I haven't yet been to the store 
and bought one package of toilet paper. I'm not, I'm just, I think it's, it's wise to make sure that you have, <laughs> have what, you know, the things you need and realize that, you know, you need to make sure that you have what you need for a period of time. But, but God's people don't need to go crazy with it. God's going to take care of us. His hand is on us. He loves us. Remember, when the rest of the world was in great famine, God's people were blessed down in the land of Goshen. And God's capable wherever you are. God's capable of taking care of you. When I started the work in the Dominican Republic, there was a little village outside of the town of La Romana. I'm talking about this little village was in the middle of sugarcane fields. I'm talking about thousands of acres of sugar. And this little village, there it was. And the people that lived there, people that the sugarcane factory had living there, they were poverty-stricken people. They lived there and they worked the sugar fields. They still work sugar fields over there with oxen and a cart. They still cut down sugar with, with machetes. They pile them on a cart. The oxen takes them over. They got train tracks running through them fields. They pile it on a train car and it takes it back to town where the sugar plant is where they, they cook it and they make sugar. That's a big commodity and import for that country. But what amazed me so much that this was the third church that God added when I went to the Dominican Republic. Way out in the middle of nowhere, a little group of people. You talk about a happy people when they got this message. Just a little old shack of a church. It was so full of people. It, it, it had windows and doors, but there was no, it had windows and door openings but it had no windows and no doors. And the church was so full of people would stand outside with their heads sticking in the windows and stand out looking through the door openings. And I remember when we first started that church, actually they had a better church in town, but they got kicked out of it. Not in town, but in the village. They got kicked out of it because it was an organization that they didn't understand what God was doing. And so they, they shut the building up and run the people out and they built this little shack of a building. And right after God built it, a white dove, a white dove sat on one of the rafters, a two before rafter, just on the left-hand side if you're sitting on the platform part. There was no platform, it was just a division where the pulpit was. That white dove was there in every service for three months. I was there on two or three different occasions and we'd, we'd shout and sing and, and that dove would not fly away. It would stay there and it'd hunker up and raise its wings up and then when we'd calm down, he'd sit down on, on that rafter. I told the people, I said, just, I said see that? That's a testimony and a witness that God's with you people. A white dove, a picture of the Spirit of God. Wow. God knew where them people was. I still am, am just in awe of that, that God, no matter where you're at in this world, God knows where you are. So don't get to feeling alone. Jesus said, I have another that bears witness of me. And you have a host, not just the Father. You've got the saints of God, you've got the angels in heaven, and Jesus Christ is added to the list. God bless your hearts today. Just remember, God will. Take care of you. 
God bless you. You have a good day, and I'll talk to you again Thursday night at 7 o'clock.